Yeah. Our first speaker of the night is Marcus Howell, the receivers coach and pass game coordinator for the Toronto Argonauts. Ball down in Texas at Texas Southern. Ended up getting drafted back to Winnipeg in 2000. Ended up playing 11 years in, in the CFL, Winnipeg, Ottawa, and Calgary. And then this is my uh, 10th year coaching. So 21 years total in the CFL is uh, kind of what I bring to the table. Um, so I'm excited. I'm in Toronto now. We got a great staff and uh, looking forward to seeing if we get a chance to hit the field this year. Uh, but today, uh, today I'm bringing uh, the discussion from the, from the office perspective. All right, can you guys see that on my PowerPoint? Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so I'm bringing wide receiver indie period. But instead of going into the drill so much, I know a lot of you got a lot of wide receiver guys and pass game guys on this on this chat. Um, I'm coming to it from the from the office perspective. How do we plan and execute our indie period? Uh, the last two staffs I've been on, we had some young coaches, and kind of when you when you tell them, hey, you got your your drills ready, or are you ready for your indie period? They kind of have a blank stare at times, not knowing what you mean about the prep work. Okay, so that's where I'm kind of coming at it from, from today. Okay. Right. All right, here we go. All right, so definition of indie obviously means individual. Okay, so the Webster Dictionary tells us that uh, it means single or separate. Okay, so our task here is to improve each wide receiver on the basic mechanics of football, right? Which is their their fundamental. Okay, so as coaches, we're trying to get these guys to improve on the most fundamental basics of football. Okay, that's how I that's how I approach individual period. Okay, all right. For me, fundamentals equals discipline. Okay, discipline football teams win football games. It's that simple. Discipline discipline teams wins games. Now. There's been many times where you've been outmatched talent-wise, but because you guys uh, uh, block right, quarterback takes the right drop, we pitch and catch, we move the chains, we score, we end up beating more talented teams because we're disciplined. So for me, in the indie period, that's where that begins. Indie period is important because of the discipline of your unit. Okay. All right, so then I, what you want to do is – you want to scour and sprinkle in the talent. When you sprinkle in some talent on top of that discipline, talent and discipline equals championships. And that's, that's what our ultimate goal. That's where we want to be. All right, so everybody's scouring the globe for talent, whether it's high school, college, or the pros. All right, but when you find that talent, if we can get it to be disciplined and meshed with the rest of our team, okay, that's when you win championships. And to me, that starts in that individual period. Indy. Okay, so what's the goal? Okay, so for me, I challenge my receivers to get 1% better each week. Can you improve just 1% each week? Okay, it may not happen on Monday, it may not happen on Tuesday, but by kickoff on the weekend, are you 1% better than when we started the week? Okay, all right, so I had a coach in Calgary 2006, Tom Higgins. He always, he always uh, echoed this every day, every week to the entire team. You can either get better or you can get worse, but nothing ever stays the same, right? And I agree with that. When you step on a football field to practice, are you going to get better or are you going to get worse? Because if you decide to coast, you're going to get worse. Okay? Your opponents are getting better, so do you. Okay? To me, that's where individual starts. When you touch the field, are you going to hit Indy with a purpose to improve or to coast and try and get by on your talent? Okay, so here's my improvement goals. I, in the CFL, we typically have five receivers on the field. Well, if each guy improves 1%, well, as a receiving core, we're improving 5% that week. That's big growth for me, okay? But then, you know, Sharps talks about the O-line, okay? Well, the O-line's got five guys. Well, the whole line, each, each one of them improves 5%. Okay? Well, I put the running back and the fullback in there. Okay? So each one of those backs improves 1%. That's 2%. Okay? And then the quarterback, there's only one of them on the field. He improves 1%. Well, if we take that approach, 
each player 1% as an offense. When you break training camp and you go to week one to play as an offense, you guys have already improved 13% if everybody accepts that challenge. As an offense, in one week, you've improved 13%. Okay? If you take an 18-week schedule, CFL is 18, you know, uh, college is 11, plus 13, you know, 12 with a bowl game, you know, uh, you know, youth sports, you got probably eight games or so, right? You can, you can multiply that by how many weeks you play, but that's 234% in the CFL season offensively that you've improved. That's more than double what you started training camp as a team with your, with your efficiency, okay? Getting better as a unit. You throw the defense on top of that, six DBs, two linebackers, four D linemen. If everybody just accepts the challenge of improving 1% per week, the entire team just improved 450% in 18 weeks. That is fantastic. Heading into the playoffs with that, with that much improvement on one football team. Okay? I truly believe that. <clears throat> okay? So how do, we, how do we get this accomplished? Okay? Well, one, I use my veteran leadership. Make these guys lead by example. So when I hit the field for Indy, I use, uh, last year I coached Brian Burnham. 1,500-yard guy. Well, guess what? My word means something, but his example echoes what I'm trying to teach. So Brian Burnham, 1,500-yard guy, he took every single first rep in Indy for the entire year. Okay? That, that speaks volumes with what you're trying to teach those guys in that limited time. Okay? It's an opportunity for you as a coach to set the tone and the expectations for practice. So frequently... How Indy goes, so does the rest of practice, right? How Indy goes, so does the rest of practice. So for me, I try and challenge these guys to set the tone, be crisp, be focused, execute. That seems to carry on and, and finish the day well. If you struggle in Indy, if there's a lack of focus in Indy, it usually creeps up in other parts of your practice, right? That's just me. Okay. The chance for me to introduce drills and techniques. Okay. Now, drills and techniques that's going to help you teach your system. Okay. Because there's thousands of drills out there. Okay. But what drills are you going to use to help teach what you're trying to do offensively? For example, uh, we're a speed cut team most of the time, 90%. On digs and outs, we're a speed cut team. Well, if I'm getting, if I'm using a drill that's going to, chop, chop at the top and make them square that thing off. Well, I'm being counterproductive to my system, right? What I want to do is I want to introduce speed cut drills to help me enhance what we're trying to do as an entire scheme, as an offense. So don't bring drills into Indy that's going to hamper your system, okay? Reinforce those drills with details, okay? So how do you do that? Be disciplined, all right? Make them do it right. Okay. If it's a false step, when, he's, when they're leaving the line of scrimmage, send them back. Okay. If their arms get lazy at the top of a, uh, uh, like doing a, a route top ends and cuts, okay. if their arms are getting lazy, don't let them get away with it. Send them back to the, send them back to the start, do it right. Okay. Very important. Your chance to emphasize details. Okay. Now, bonding time. A lot of coaches think bonding time with your group is just off the field you know, at a barbecue, or maybe you're going bowling or swimming, right? For me, I think critical bonding time is in Indy, okay? You get to challenge your guys with techniques you want them to do, and they get to explore, because okay, everybody's different with their length and their stride and their, their cadence in terms of their uh, stride steps. Everybody's different. It gives them a chance to explore and trust you when you tell them, hey, let's switch our feet on this one. And now let's try it again, right? Now that, that creates a trust between you and, your, and that guy, that receiver, that, hey, coach is really spending time trying to help me to do this thing right here in Indy. Okay, I think that's important. Okay? So how do you plan for this? Okay, so how do you plan for this? Okay, examine the practice schedule to locate work segments. Well, that sounds easy. Just look at the schedule 
It says, Indy, schedule my drills in. Not that simple. I approach it like this. 10 minutes before walkthrough is a wide receiver warm-up. So I stole 10 minutes there. Indy period, I got 10 minutes there. Routes on air, I got 10 minutes there. Shoot, that's 30 minutes already. Right? We didn't even hit practice yet, right? Uh, kickoff return, okay? Well, I lose some guys on kickoff return, but I still have a, my core group, the guys that are going to dress on game day. So I steal another 10 minutes, okay? And then pump return or something else, I steal another 10 minutes. So I can steal just like the old line. That's where I learned it from. Every time the old line isn't, in, isn't on special teams, they're working. I took that same model and I applied that to the receiver. Steal the work where you can. You create the work ethic. Okay? Teach what you believe in. I played 11 years in the league. There's certain drills and techniques that work for me that I truly think work. I apply those. I visit uh, other, other programs, whether it's the NFL or college, okay, your, your uh, professional development. Take what you like from those visits and apply it to what you, what you believe in and teach those things. Okay? Acquire drills to emphasize those beliefs. Again, be careful of YouTube. I think there's a lot of great content out there, but limit YouTube, Twitter, uh, you know, Facebook, Instagram. Okay. There's a lot of different accounts on there claiming to coach football. Well, some guys are legit, some guys aren't. Okay. Some drills help you, some don't. So just be careful what you, what you uh, use to, to enhance your library. Okay. All right, create a drill template. This is where the gold is made for me. I create myself a drill template, which uh, I can send to Sharps. The Sharps can get out to you guys if you need it. Okay. So I create a drill template. During the off season, all my drills fit into this nice little template broken into each technique that I want to teach, whether it's stance and start, whether it's footwork, whether it's releases, hand, violent hands, uh, whether it's stock blocking, whether it's hitting the sled, whether it's, uh, um, you know, the top of the route, stem, whether it's um, whatever, switch releases, trail releases, whether it's fitting your grunt fits. I have a drill, a major drill uh, template that, that fits all those drills in. That acts as my master reference guide. I know where to go. I don't have to dream it up. I don't have to pull it out of thin air. I spent the time in the off season to figure out what drills I want to use. Okay? That's where you go to fix an issue. Okay? Whether you win or you lose, there's always something to get better at. It gets more evident when you lose, it becomes more urgent when you lose, okay? But when you win, you should still have that same urgency. But where do you go to fix it? If I'm throwing a bubble screen and my guys aren't getting it done on the perimeter and the blocking, well, I don't want to pull a new drill out or have to go find it. I put the work in in the off season, I go to my template, my master reference, and boom, I pull that one out, I pull that one out, and I apply it to practice. All right, use training camp to intro drills. I hate give, putting new drills in during the season. All the drills that these guys will get for 2020, they would have experienced it at some point during training camp. I would have ran it at some time, whether it's the first day of camp, whether it's the last day of camp. At some point, they would have went through it, experienced it, and when I bring it to the season, hey, we're going to do the Moss progression. So they know exactly what I'm talking about, and we're rolling into it. Okay. Fight for the camera. Monitor the pro progress. O-line coaches are going to hog the camera. You got to fight, fight them for it, right? I don't care if you get it once a week, All right? They're going to want the camera. Hey, I, I implore you, get your, get your indie drills filmed at least once a week. That way you can monitor the progress of the drills, how it looked early, how it looked in the middle of the season, how it looked late, okay? And you can turn around and show it to the guys. Hey, this is what I'm teaching. This is what I want. Okay. All right. Here's a good, here's a good rep. Here's a bad rep. That way the guys get reinforcement of what you're trying to teach. Okay. All right. Transparency. So what I do is the head coach usually puts out a schedule. Okay. Or they post it on the TV or they post it on the bulletin board, which is cool. Then what I do is I take that schedule and I make it into my own. And in each period where we're going to work, 
whether it's free practice during special teams, whatever, I post my drills that are going in in those segments. I take that. I take that sheet and I post it near the wide receivers where their lockers are. And it's a, it's amazing to see how they a, a, appreciate that. Players will anticipate the workload and practice accordingly. They can see the entire picture. You're not springing something on them new, okay? Because it might be a hard work day. My indie might be, might be taxing. And they have a chance to anticipate that and get their mind right and, and work accordingly, okay? All right, so okay, here's it. I'll show you a uh, copy of this drill menu. Any questions so far? Oh, good, rolling. Okay, all right, so here's my 2020 drill menu for the Argos. Okay, all right, so you can see across the top there is my le are my legends. Okay, so I got my warm up. So every 10 minutes. Before a walkthrough, it's kind of like during the, it kind of blends into special teams. So some guys are on the jugs for teams. My receivers that aren't returners are with me. And we're working straight throw. I name it, I'll name all these drills, but I want to name them so I can remember what they are. Okay. If somebody else named them and you like the name, cool. Take the drill, make it your own, name it what you want so you can go back and find it and you know what it is later. Okay. So across here, I got all my warm-up drills. You know, my next column, I got footwork. Okay, I got I got stance, stance and start. I got horizontal. We're allowed to move on the line of scrimmage up here in the CFL. I got movement stuff. Okay, I got line of scrimmage for my outside guys, line of scrimmage work. I got waggle work for my slot guys, right? Got my top end work next column. I got a bunch of catching drills, right? Most important job, receiver, right? Catch the ball. I got a thousand uh, catching drills, okay? And then blocking in the far right, which I hit a lot. I hit blocking twice a week, okay? Whether it's the sled, okay? Whether it's a shield, okay? we hit the sled at least once a week, okay? Screen blocking, okay? And then blocking from a protection standpoint in terms of bringing a receiver in to be part of the protection, okay? So we have a whole menu that we hit weekly, okay, in terms of blocking. Okay. Now, by, as I slide down the menu, okay, you'll see on the far left here, I have the wide receiver DB competitive section. Okay. This is where we bring the DBs in and we get a live look in our indie period. Okay. We get a live look. So it can be uh, a live stock block drill where we add a running back in it, throw a toss route and have the DBs uh, react to the run and the wideout have to fit it. Okay. We have a, uh, uh, an engaged throw by where we run a route. We run a full route. And at the top of the route, the ball is caught by somebody else where we'll flip our hips and then engage. Okay? We got a screen blocking drill. We got a hallway escape, which is two lines with uh, release drills going the width of the field, using the stripes on the field as hallways. And we work releases that way, one with a static start, one, one with a uh, – with a, with a waggle, with a pre-snap motion. Okay, we got punch and stack releases, obviously one-on-ones, everybody does one-on-ones, okay, half field stuff, okay? And then I got a 50-50 a, a, a drill, or fade drill. So fade drill, we run all go routes. We go in the red zone and everybody runs a go route. The DBs know it, the receivers know it. We, we it's either a, a ball over the top or a back shoulder over the top or back shoulder. And they, on occasion, we'll throw a slant in there just to keep the defense honest. Okay, we'll throw a slant in there. So I got competition fade drill, the bubble drill I told you about, throwing a bubble, letting the DBs react to it. Okay. Uh, BMF drill, that's a bad, bad motherfucker drill. Excuse my French. Okay, so we line them up. DB and a wide receiver a yard apart, nose to nose. Okay, on the whistle, they smack each other in the face. And they got to run each other down the train tracks. Ain't no twisting and turning. You got to be the baddest dude trying to get some toughness in a wide receiver DB competitive period. I love that. I hit this during training camp. We try and hit it every third day or so, second or third day. In terms of some of these other drills, one-on-ones we hit more often. But during the week, I try and hit it every other week 
where we get a, com a competitive period with the DBs, right? Scramble drills, taking the scramble drill, breaking it into isolation parts, okay? Stems, how you stemming our DBs, handwork, club chop, club rip, club grab, slap, quicks, okay? Uh, the finish, all right, finish, GTFU. So after the catch, get the fuck upfield, GTFU. I actually write that on their grade sheet, GTFU. Okay, so they know what I'm talking about. We know it. We don't have to cuss and be loud off, out outside so everyone can hear it. We just use acronyms, GTFU. They know exactly what you're talking about. Okay, getting that ball upfield after the catch. Okay, there's our ball security uh, uh, group down here working on ball security. Our run fits we talked about earlier. Pop in the double move stems. Okay. I have a little section down here called tall boy dr drill where I have uh, some uh, last few years, I've had some wide receivers that are six, three and six, four. Right. So sometimes they have a little trouble getting down into those, into the, uh, those cone drills, sinking those hips and getting in and out of cuts and in and out of breaks. So I got a couple of drills that I got from some NFL receivers that uh, coaches that help get those, guys to transition and drop that weight all right so i really i'll bring take those real tall guys and pull them aside and make sure i hit those uh you know very often you know every day three or something like that just to make sure we're staying on top of it all right and then some old some hex hex cone drills that i got here but this is my template and this is where i go so from training camp to the end of the season i'm not coming off this thing i'm not inventing anything I'm not coming off it. If I need to go find something, I go to it and Im implement it. Okay? All right? Then my next one is what I give the receivers for practice. Okay? So this is a, a, the, the, the practice schedule for the day that I took and made it my own. So it mirrors what the head coach, what the head coach put out. I put a little... Uh, Emphasis for the day on top saying waggle hard. That's all right. That's our emphasis. Our waggles were sloppy, you know, second day at camp. So day three, I want to focus on the waggles. Okay. But what I have, I have the period on the left. I got the drill in the middle. Okay. And I got the time period of what we need. And I have the equipment we need for that drill. And then the coach involved in the drill. Okay. So this is my warm up. All I need is some balls and it's just me, MH, okay? When you get down here into the nitty gritty, this is my indie. So I get my indie broken up, okay? We're gonna work top end, nod progression, okay? I need two cones, I need balls, and it's just me, okay? Then I'm bringing the DBs in for competition, okay? We got hallway releases. I need eight cones, okay? Now it's myself and the DB coach. Me and I at the time was Ryan Phillips, me and RP. Okay, so, you know, then you see when we go into the team periods, it's all coaches, okay? And then back here, down here in the orange is my special teams period. I'm gonna steal some more time. I need a crayon, I need some balls, and I need it's just me, okay? So that's how I approach Indy for the day, right? And for me, the more work you can get one-on-one -on -one with that, with those, with your group is, uh, is beneficial beneficial for you okay all right so to finish let's wrap up i know time's limited okay prioritize your indie period okay okay if the schedule changes if the schedule changes are required consider other alternatives i know indie is the very first thing to get chopped every time there's a a rain you know a thunderstorm coming or it's a short week or you know, some issue arises, the first thing to go is Indy. Well, I fight like hell to try and keep my Indy. And if they do cut it for that day, I try and steal some more somewhere else in the schedule. Okay, because I really believe in it. Okay, win with fundamentals. Okay, if you stick with that, okay, fundamentals wins games, sprinkle in some talent, you'll win some championships. Okay. All right, that's me. That was awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, so if you guys have any questions, just unmute yourselves and go ahead and, and ask. So one thing you'll see with Marcus was 
his spreadsheets are always the cleanest, neatest looking things. He can least spread out. I love it. Anytime I go jump on his computer and see stuff, it's beautiful. Anybody have any questions or anything? Go ahead. Don't be shy. No questions? All right. Get off yeah. scot free there, Marcus. Amen. Thanks again for awesome. doing that. That was awesome. Yeah, guys. And then, uh, so my templates are available for you guys. So, you know, I know you guys may have your own, which is great. Run with it. But if you want something like that to help organize something, shoot Sharps an email and, and I'll get that out to you, man. I, seriously. You know, I, I, I did a couple clinics uh, down south. And, uh, a lot of coaches down there wanted the templates and the feedback's been great. So, um, you know, ask away if you need it. It's yours. No problem. Awesome. All right. Hey, sorry, Paul. Uh, Question oh. for Marcus, if possible. It's way too Yeah, go right ahead. Yeah, Marcus, I was just wondering because I noticed the time limitations and I noticed the movement. What do you do to um, to kind of ease the transition or speed up the Indies? I mean, I always find the challenge with quarterbacks and receivers that ten minute period is, is such a brief period. Is there any kind of? I mean, obviously planning is the key, but do you have any kind of secrets or tips that you use yeah. to kind of optimize that period? Yeah, well, for me, like, are you just talking about indie period ten minutes? Uh, for both your indie and routes on air, because I fight like hell to get routes on air separate, right? Because a lot of coaches want to say, okay, you got 10 minutes with Indy, then the OC comes and says, all right, we're throwing this, these concepts. Well, I lost my Indy. I ain't got no Indy now, all right? So for me, I try and fight, say, okay, even if I get five minutes of me, myself, with my group, okay, and then I get 10 minutes of routes on air, that that kind of satisfies it. But during stretch, I'm setting up my drills. So when they're stretching, they're on the ground doing their thing. I'm out here setting up my cones, setting up my my bags and you know my crayons, all that stuff. So we can go from one drill to the next without without issue, right? And then once we're ready, we're sprinting over. When they're sprinting over to the quarterbacks to go throw, that's when I'm cleaning stuff up. So to me, that helps speed up the transition. Uh, the issue comes when you want to hit the sled because the sleds are never down by the skill guys, right? Sleds are always down there by the by the big boys. So you gotta um, you know, you just gonna have to run down there, hit the sled, and, and come on back. You know, that's how. Actually, it. if I could steal one more second of your time, uh, yeah. just and again, maybe this is getting a little too granular, but I was curious as to if you could maybe explain one uh, one of the drills that you do in terms of really working the stemming of the routes. Is there a go-to drill that you prefer? I, when I work, what are you talking about on the stem? You talking about on the initial release off the line of scrimmage, or are you talking about in the body of the route? Or are you talking about I'm talking the on, on the initial release from the line of scrimmage? Yeah. So I work. I really work. Uh, what we call uh, a jet release, where my my talent is better than yours, right? So really, that's the, you're talking about the footwork at the line of scrimmage. My talent is better than yours. I'm as a D lineman runs the hump of a of a tackle and he dips that shoulder and drags his knuckles on the ground to run the hump to get to the quarterback. That's the same technique I'm using to jet release outside. I'm dipping that shoulder. I'm losing it. I'm going to drag my knuckles and get vertical. And I know I'm more talented than you. So I'm going to win. If I'm not, now I got to use footwork. But that's where I foot fire. I'm a foot fire guy. So I'm going to foot fire stick and go. Or I'm going to foot fire stick stick and go. Right, I don't like foot fire and stick, stick, stick. That takes too long. So they got two choices: they can foot fire, stick, or foot fire, stick, stick, and get out. Right, and then we put handwork in there. But to me, when you're talking line of scrimmage, a lot of a lot of receiver coaches ignore the footwork part first. Right, they always want to work hands and clubs and all that stuff. Well, if your feet are wrong, all that all that doesn't matter. Right. So for me, when you're leaving the line of scrimmage, working stems releases footwork first footwork first so on that release you advocate like if they're doing a jet release as you described there, you advocate the sinking of the hips that they would do i do break. oh yeah I, I lose that inside hip and that shoulder and then i'm gonna throw a nasty rip i'm i'm ripping and i'm gone yeah oh yeah that's when that's for me i use that when you got you know i got the Duran carters of the world uh who are uber talented uber fast you know they just go you know uh you know uh, when you got guys that are more crafty like uh, Brian Burnham or, you know, Terrence Edwards, those type guys, 
you know, now you think they're going to give you a little something at the line of scrimmage. But when you got them talented, talented athletes, let them go. Just let them, don't, don't hamper them. Just let them go. Yeah. Awesome. Cool, man. I could ask you a million questions, but I, I'll, I'll let us move forward. <laughs> Appreciate it, Marcus. Thanks right, again, no man. Problem. Thanks, Paul. That's Blaine Shar. You can give me a bigger slot next time. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions before Marcus takes off? No. All right. Hey, Marcus, appreciate you jumping on. You did an amazing job. If Ooh. you Marcus, you'll see he has this energy all the time. Uh, if you see him on the sidelines at a game, he's always fired up, and his positive energy is contagious to everyone around him. So it's always great being around Marcus. So awesome, man. Good, good. I'll pop back in. I'll be a fly on the wall. I just want kids running around yelling.